Attack on Titan is the hottest anime of all time, and its massive and somehow still growing popularity is no surprise when considering just how unique and interesting the world is. Couple that with amazing writing and hands down some of the greatest animation and music we have ever seen in anime and you truly have something special. Ordering the line between shonen and seinen that has real adult themes, action, and violence that is meaningful, exciting, and also fun when the seriousness of the plot is not taking over the screen. There are stakes. This is done brilliantly through the brutality and depth of the world of Attack on Titan. This world gave birth to a really unique battle system and military regime that brings fresh and exciting strategy and combat through the screen. It also may have brought one of the freshest and most exciting fits to the anime world. Before we dig into why, a brief PSA, due to how intrinsic mystery and revelations are to the plot, I'll be minimizing spoilers as much as possible and focus just on the military outfits in the earlier seasons. I know a lot of people are playing catch up and so I ask that you don't go into any manga spoilers or anime spoilers in the comments, and especially season 4 spoilers. I won't be mentioning future weapons or clothing due to this and I ask that if you want to discuss things please comment spoiler followed by manga or anime depending on which one it is and reply to it with your comment so that we can have spoiler threads rather than spoiler comments that ruin things for people. With all that squared away, let's get into the video. The military in Attack on Titan is broken up into four major divisions. The three main branches are Scouts, or Survey Corps, the Military Police, and the Garrison. The final division is the Training Corps that teaches youngins how to be soldiers, and at the end they are able to choose which military branch they want to be in. I won't bore you with the details of what every single branch does, but basically, the Military Police are the best soldiers that get the luxury of not going to war, the Garrison is Border Patrol, and the Survey Corps are the Marines. Although the uniform is the same across all branches, we'll be mostly focusing on the Survey Corps insignia. According to former Colonel G.P. Kruger, there are many psychological implications of military uniforms, including the importance of style, appearance, and color, as well as insignia, decorations, and so on. These contribute to togetherness, orderliness, and discipline and add to the soldier's sense of camaraderie, cohesion, and a spirit de corps. It's pretty simple when you break it down. You look good, you feel good, you feel good, you play good. And with uniforms, there needs to be a strong sense of, well, uniformity. You're fighting together on the battlefield, so it's a given that the outfits must not only identify you to your team members, but also represent that togetherness. And of course, from an individual standpoint, it has to be functional. I mentioned the world earlier because the main crux of the show is the Titans. These hungry hungry hippo looking naked dudes are the only enemy that the military has to unite against. Normally military uniforms are designed to represent unity against a multitude of different countries and enemies. But, because there is only one real enemy for Aaron and his friends to fight, the military uniforms are specifically designed to fight Titans. There are two main military outfits, the main one and the dress greens. The main outfit consists of white pants with long brown leather boots that have a flap to cover over the knee. It is matched with what feels like a hundred leather belt straps all over the body and a spicy little brown crop top cargo jacket as well as a brown little skirt thing over the pants. The dress green simply replaced the brown jacket with a very long green jacket and are worn when off duty or to ceremonies like any other dress uniform in the military. Most of the show takes place when on duty so we'll be discussing the main uniforms but my quick thoughts on the dress greens are that they are very hideous. It's a terrible color, puke army green, with no inspired design, and looks bad on everyone. It just makes it more depressing when someone of military importance dies knowing you have to wear those whack ass threads. Now back to the main fit. The colors of the fit are shades of brown and white. The color brown and the earth tones of the fit represent stability, dependability, and groundedness, which is exactly what you want for in a military uniform. Not to mention it fits with the earthly terrain helps blend into buildings and land and doesn't stick out like a ghillie suit on the subway. Great colors aside though, what I like about this fit the most is its design is actually as practical as it gets while standing out against regular uniforms. The humans in the show are mostly either really skinny or in great shape. 
the main population is poor because resources outside of the wall are hard to come by and the society is not very advanced. They have never seen the ocean as mentioned by Armin in the first episode and don't know anything aside from living like cattle to be safe from the titans. The leather straps and tight pants are a fat boy's nightmare, but most people who are overweight live in the royal family and are wealthy, so it actually works really, really well. The tightness makes the characters as aerodynamic as possible when they fly through the air, which is super important when zipping past these monsters. The characters never look like their mobility is hindered as these straps never seem to cover joints. These straps are practical as well, as they are completely necessary to hold up the 3D maneuver gear, one of the coolest weapons in any media. The jacket is also important. It covers the giant metal piece that holds the straps together, which not only offers a small layer of protection to the straps, but it also offers that uniformity piece for replacing the metal plate with an insignia and symbol of the military division you were in. The two parts of the uniform that seem the most whack are the chocolate brown boots and skirt thing, and at first they seem stupid, but both are actually very important. The skirt has an entire episode dedicated to it, showing that it is intrinsic to the balance that one has when using the 3D maneuver gear. Without it, you're screwed. The boots offer an extra security to the straps, which hook around one's feet. Using your feet helps you distribute your weight in the air, and also, as sad as it is, the boots and knee flaps are designed for the despair of war. These titans are cruel, cruel creatures, and time and time again as people lose their lives we see our characters fall to their knees in agony. These boots that protect the knees when people collapse in despair may be the heaviest but most important design of them all. On a more lighthearted note, let's talk about rank and individuality. In the real military, rank and awards are held as ribbons or medals to attach to your vest. In this high-flying combative world, it would be impossible to keep ribbons on. Instead, it seems as though medals and ribbons for higher-ranked military officials are represented by polo ties, as we see Erwin, Pixis, and other commanders sport them, with jewel colors reflecting the division that they are in. Pixis is also seen to rep a red banner as well. This seems to have no significance whatsoever other than making Pixis look like he won Miss Universe. Another thing that differs is individuality. Take a look at some of the best looking military uniforms right now. Notice anything? Aside from being bump and fresh, they're all the same from the top to bottom for each member. They're as uniform as uniform gets. In Attack on Titan, however, these uniforms are the jackets and so the characters are able to subtly change the look and feel with their undershirt and accessories. There are also no rules on hair like real militaries have. The face structures and designs of each character are unique in their own right to the Isayama's brilliant art style, but the clothes also tell a lot about each character. Aaron wears the same type of raggedy cloth shirt as he does in his childhood, emphasizing his fixation on his goals rather than himself. Mikasa's scarf represents how much Eren means to her as well as her elegance and strength, as scarves used to represent power for women. Annie's hoodie represents her cool, calm nature, but also signifies foreignness and how different she is. And Levi's fit represents that he is simply above you peasants. These aspects allow for every character to stand out within the same box, and that design is quite frankly fashion brilliance. The last thing and most important part of the outfit in my opinion is the symbolism of the Survey Corps. The Wings of Freedom are a staple of the series and the franchise and represent the characters yearning to go outside and leave the cage that they are in. The symbol is something that is embedded into the themes of the series, emphasizing that even when they are outside of the walls on a mission, they are still in search of their freedom. The government and military is led by royal figures and priests. Assuming a belief in Christianity or something like it, we can interpret the wing's meaning. One wing is white, which represents purity, and the other is blue, which would represent heaven. This further emphasizes the want for freedom, be it in destroying the titans or in death itself. The symbol's feathers are also represented by small individual feathers, which are reminiscent of the long distance scouting formation, a tactic used exclusively by the Survey Corps that Commander Irvin developed, and is a really nice touch. Every uniform also has a wonderful forest green poncho, but none wear it best like the Survey Corps. 
On top of the hood having real use and being fly as fuck, the ponchos make the survey corps look like heroes as if they wear capes. And when you juxtapose that with Aaron's reaction at the beginning of the series, and the hellish reality it is to be a survey corps member later on, you get a really amazing elevation to the Fitz narrative appeal. The cape brings out not only more symbolism, but also more depth. We're talking about layers, baby! It's a minimalist fashion style that allows for more creativity, and it's also why the individualized undershirts and accessories make the outfits even better. All in all, the Survey Corps uniform gives off a sense of conformity and camaraderie that is essential for any military. The colors are clean and fit the military beliefs. They are functional and practical, and despite having enough leather belts to put a J crew out of business, it's necessary and kind of slick. The boots and weird skirt are a little strange, but the spruce and a darker shade of brown is inviting, and both items turn out to be functional and as necessary as it gets. This uniformity also further pushes later themes on their head when we find out about the idea of Titan shifters and Attack on Titan suddenly becomes Among Us. That makes the idea of enemies within the walls feel so much more tense as everyone feels so united and it makes the subtleties of the characters' movements and their undershirts and accessories that give them character uniqueness more revealing and powerful. We didn't talk much about 3D maneuver gear, but the concept of being Batman at all times is thrilling and every aspect of it oozes with design. I can make an entire video just on the 3D maneuver gear itself. When you add that with the extra layer of the green cape they sometimes wear and a symbol that also pushes the themes of freedom that is redefined time and time again in the series, well, what can we say other than that's one fresh fit. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. Give a like and subscribe if you're really into it, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Bang!